What's going on Chief Architect people? Got a quick short video here. We're going to set up some preferences for colors. I get often asked about the colors I've got established when using Chief Architect. Now, this works for Chief Architect or Home Designer Pro. Um, I'm not sure about the lower Home Designer products, but let's get into edit preferences if you're on a PC. Otherwise, I believe preferences on a Mac is actually the Mac symbol in your um, top bar. So I'm going to have to let me know about that. But um, I'm going to get into the appearance panel and then the sub panel colors. Okay. And here's where we set up our various colors. Now for our handle fill, this is the one I start with. I kind of like to mess around with this color first to get an idea of exactly what I want. And then I go check it in the software, come back, play around with the colors again. And let me just do an overview of what my colors are. Watch me just select this polyline box, for instance. So we're gonna see here the selected edge handle color. That's right here. And you can see that with this handle color, there's a little bit of opacity, excuse me, transparency, right? It's not completely opaque. What I have here is um, the color black. It's just the black with a, a bit of transparency. And then we've got selection color is a very bright pink and then um, selection fill is a uh, turquoise and that's got um, quite a bit of transparency so you can see here as we overlap notice that this isn't quite 100 percent filled let's go take a look at how this works back in edit preferences under selection fill we can see here we've got an opacity slider i have mine set to 20 percent so that if we change this to something like 80 percent and then went back into the program you're going to see here we can barely see through to the wall below so Get back into my preferences and kind of go over a couple of these things. So I'm going to set that back to 20% and I like to pick a really bright color. I kind of bounce back and before between a bright pink and a bright turquoise. And then my selection line is also a bright pink and I've got the opacity set to 80%. In fact, I think pretty much everything is set to 80% on the opacity. Now, um, something you can do that might help you is if you're having difficulty seeing an edit handle, that opacity might help, but that's just to show you that there is an edit handle. But as we get into a really small um, object where we're trying to get to those edit handles, you're going to end up having to zoom depending on the size that you have set for those edit handles. And we'll go into that in one second. But um, the layout background, that's just a white color. Same with our plan detail background. The selection line, I've got a bright pink. Selection fill is a bright turquoise. Handle fill is a bright turquoise. You can see the RGB values here, 75, 255, 255. Now I'm just using the preset basic color. So I'm just clicking on that basic color for this. So that when we pick up this wall here, you can see it fills turquoise. It's got its end, um, end edit handles here are that turquoise with a bit of opacity. And then you can also see that I've got that pink selection color and that black primary edit handle color. Now that um, selected edge edit, edit handle color will let you know that you're modifying that particular edge. And this comes in handy when you're doing things like um, solid modeling. So taking a look at this and going a step further, we'll notice that my edge edit handles are all pretty large. And the other thing that you might notice is I've got start and end indicators and we'll go over to how how to set that up as well now looking at this polyline as i shrink this down they're pretty small my edge edit handles the size of them make it so that i can't really select them once it's shrunken down too small so i have to zoom in and i use a 3d mouse so it's really easy for me to zoom in on the fly and do some editing um, if you don't use a 3d mouse then you're going to use the scroll wheel to um, to kind of zoom in or any other number of tools to zoom in and that can be kind of tedious which is going to lead you to setting up that edge edit handle size so let's get into that edit panel okay and then we're going to see here we've got edit handle size is right here so something you can do here is change this size way down to something really really small now if you do that I would suggest that you change the edit handle tolerance by default this is set to one you might want to set this uh, to three, four, or five, something like that. We'll just set this to five to take a look at what that does. And you're going to notice now when I select this, it's really easy to see the edge edit handle. And I don't need to be super precise with my mouse movement. You can see here as I'm getting 
just close. This is within five pixels of these particular edit handles. You can see the mouse cursor changing. So that's what that tolerance does. It means we don't have to be exactly on that edge edit handle to pick up those handles, right? So this is maybe useful if you're not using a 3D mouse and um, and also that you're not presenting on YouTube or something like that. Because uh, for me, I have to stream my content. And so you're not going to like it when I show edit handles that are this small. Back into that preferences, set this back up. So uh, edit handle size, I'm going to set this to, maybe I'll set this to something a little bit smaller than I usually do. And I'm going to put this back up to uh, handle tolerance of three. And then show start and end indicators this is where this lives it's in the edit panel so this will show a start and end to not only your walls but things like polylines as well so that you understand the relationship between um, settings based on a start and end point so I'll give you an example of this I'm going to draw an interior wall all right and I'm going to put a door in this interior wall and I'm going to let, set a label offset. All right. So I'm going to get into the label panel. I'm going to get into the Y offset. I'm going to just say 12 inches. Now notice that it put it 12 inches in some direction. It's in the Y, but it's in some direction. Now our indicators here show that we're not in fact in the Y. So this can be a bit confusing. Now I'm going to show you what I mean by um, how the start end indicators can really affect a plan. Notice that my edit handle right now is on the inside surface of the wall. If you didn't know that, that's coming from a setting in our walls, okay? In the general wall category under settings, I've got resize about inner surface. That is determining what side my edit handle is. Now, what does it mean that an interior wall has an interior surface side? Well, it's just, it has to um, be able to choose uh, a side um, in some way, shape, or form to indicate a start and end point, also just to indicate a few functions within the software. So that if we want this label to be on the other side, watch what happens when I go into my floating edit toolbar here, which is usually docked at the bottom of your screen, and I'm gonna choose reverse layers. Notice what happens, it flips where that label is. So it also flipped the start and end points of this wall. So. That's a reason you might want to show start and end indicators. Another reason for that is if you're drawing out um, a lot perimeter, for instance, with just all the lines, let's just draw out a line real quick and I'm going to set this up. I want to open this up and I want to say that I want to show the length and show the angle of this particular line, all right? And notice that it's showing bearing. That's because in my settings under the CAD menu, under general CAD, I have this set up to show decimal feet and quadrant bearing so that when I choose to show line and show angle, it's going to show me decimal feet and bearing. So watch what happens now. We've got to start and end indicator point so that when I draw out this next section, I can actually specify the direction I want to go by as I'm drawing this out, hitting tab or enter and then unchecking polar or checking polar in this case. And we're going to see angle and distance. If I click on number style and change this to quadrant bearing and decimal feet, I can now plug in a bearing. So I could say this is 55.4 feet and I can say this is north 45, 15, 30 seconds east and press OK. And watch what happens. Look at that. North 45, 15, 30 east at a 55.4 decimal feet. So couple of really great reasons to show that start and end indicator. Sometimes this bearing is incorrect. Sometimes I needed this to show north 45, 15, 30 west, right? So I would need to disconnect this line, selected edge, and I'm going to do the same kind of thing that I did with the wall, reverse the direction. Notice start indicator is down here. Notice north 45, 15, 30 east. Watch when I reverse the direction. Start showing up south 45, 15, 30 west, and now this is the end indicator. So a really great reason to show those indicators, and that's on that edit panel. The last thing I want you to check out here is by default, you're set to select intersected objects. I really encourage you to select contained objects. I'm going to put that at the top of the screen right now. It's also down below the description. It's going to be a link to a video that explains exactly what this does. So that's kind of the end of this particular video about some of the preferences I like in terms of color and maybe I'll make some more of these.
leave a comment. Let me know if you want to know more about uh, certain preferences I have set up.